Ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages, the play's the thing with your host, Judy Sleeve. Special guest, Ed Butler. Panina, pizza joint extraordinaire. Love me in London. And now here's Judy, Love Judy, me all Judy. Around the world. Hello, welcome again to the Plays the Thing. And today I have Ed Butler as my guest. How are you, Ed? Uh, I have a pulse, and that's the most important part, oh, I guess. Oh, you are so right. And a good friend of mine says, when asked that question, I never had it so good. Wow. Now that's a positive attitude. I it like that. It sure is, and I'm glad to hear that. Okay. And uh, you are an artist. You have very unusual uh, art form here. I've never seen any of this before. So uh, let me just ask you, uh, how did you develop this interest in these type of things that you're doing? Um, well, <clears throat> the woodworking started uh, probably uh, in the early 60s when I moved to Huntington and had facilities. Um, I remember as a child, uh, maybe 12 years old or so, I found a plank and I got the hold of a handsaw and I cut it into three pieces and I... It, the bottom piece was like this, then the middle piece was like this, and, top, and I put some nails into it, and I painted it brown, because that's the only kind of paint I could find. <laughs> and I gave it to my mother, and she was a very loving mother, so she thought this was the greatest thing, and she just put it in. Um, she displayed it. Always, in every house we moved into, because this was during the Depression, and we did a lot of moving. You know? so we moved from one house to another just to save five dollars a month in rent but and where was that that was in roslyn roslyn heights actually oh that's a very fancy neighborhood it is now but then it was uh, probably just a, yeah, an average i'm a long island boy all the way through i was raised you in are. roslyn and uh i've been out all the way to the east end and now I'm turning around and going back uh this ring incidentally is my 1943 uh, class ring. High school. High school class ring, yeah. Wow, and your I, finger never changed. Well, it belonged <laughs> on this one originally, but it, it, it moved. Oh, well, that's still great that yeah. you have that and you could wear it. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, dug it out and I found it. That's, you're the very first one on my show who has a, a original high school ring. 1943. 1943. Yeah. So anybody who could count could figure out how old you are. Well, well April bother. 15th, I'll be 82. Oh, now Next you month. spoiled it. All the oh, math lesson. I'll take that back. <laughs> OK. Well, you look really very good for your uh, oh, the years. You. And of course, not only the looks, but your attitude towards life is wonderful. I always admire that in people. Mm -hmm. So you lived, lived uh, you started out in Roslyn, which is on the North Shore. Yeah, well, okay, and right. And then you went to school there. Yeah. And then you said you just edged out, you just kept <coughs> coming east and more east and east to east. I mean, there's a little uh, glitch in there. <laughs> there uh, is. <laughs> as I said, I was born on April 15th. And in April 15th, 1943, I was a senior in high school and World War II was going on. And they were drafting my buddies and, and everybody was going into the service. And I guess I didn't want to be left out. So I convinced my parents to let me quit school and join the Navy with two months remaining in, in high school. So when I went into the Navy, I was 17, and I never registered for the draft until I got out three years later. And uh, I really don't know why or how they they agreed to that because my brother was already in the service and it was only the two of us, but they, they went with it. So where did you go? Uh, in the Navy? Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. after I, I, they taught me how to be a radio operator and then uh, we went over to the Pacific. Took a 100,000 mile cruise throughout the Pacific. 
So you were near Pearl Harbor? I was in Pearl Harbor, yeah. You were. I wasn't there, you know, in 41, but, mm -hmm. oh yeah, we were, oh, we were in Japan, Japan, mm -hmm. Japan and China. Oh, wow. I think the most rewarding um, episode that I had in the Navy was five days after the ceasefire, uh, we pulled into Yokoh Yokohama Harbor and uh, a whole line of us, ships, and we picked up the American prisoners of war. And they were so glad to see us. And, I'm sure. And they had that look that yeah, we knew you were coming. You know, and that was very yes, rewarding sir. to be involved in that. We picked uh, up 32 different nationalities. But at any rate, then. So, uh, and, and while you were in the Navy, did you do any art? Anything? No. Nothing no. at all? I was a. Uh, uh, typical sailor. Typical, but you said you you were doing the radio. Yeah, I was a radio operator. And then uh, when you came out, what did I, you do? I, I registered for the draft when I came out because I was 17 when I went in. Yeah, but well, what uh, what did you do? Well, As I goofed a, around for a year. I got out on March the third, 1946, and I started with Lilco on March the third, 1947. Lilco. Yeah. As and a, I was with them for 40 years. Operator. Oh, no, no. I was all, uh, radio operators were all done then. But uh, you still know today how to operate a radio? I can still take I mean, code. I can do it very slow. But, but, uh, I can still yeah. copy code, yeah. It's like once you ride a bike, you know, you, you never forget. Well, I wouldn't know because I used to ride a bike. I don't think I could do it you now. You could do it. <laughs> you could do it. So uh, you were with Lilco, yes. and then you... You know, you started doing art. No. Um, what was your first project? Well, the Did first project it? was, was uh, in woodworking. First of all, I bought a house on Friday and got married on Saturday. <laughs> and I bought Very that. Very impulsive. <laughs> that, was in, that was in Bayville. And I lived in Bayville for eight years and had two children there. My, my two sons were born there, 50 and 53. And then uh, we moved to Huntington, and we lived there for 30 years, and then uh, retired, and Jeanette and I built a house out here in Springs, and we lived here for 15 years, and uh, on 2002... So you've been married a long time to Jeanette? No, I'd been divorced, and she, her husband had died uh, from MS, about the same time. So I, how, when did I had known her from town. We'd lived in the same mm -hmm. town for 30 years. So, mm -hmm. At any rate, uh, we lived in uh, Springs for uh, 15 years, P Pembroke Drive. And uh, it got a little much with uh, maintenance and whatnot. So we oh, decided. That's when I met you, you and, and Jeanette, when you were in Springs. And then we, uh, mm -hmm. we, we decided to get out of there and uh, we bought a condo in, uh, in Riverhead, and, uh, and we moved in in 2003, in June. And well, I'm really anxious to see your artwork. Okay. What do you want, you want to start um, with? This uh, is a box. It's, a, it's actually a magazine rack or a trash. You can use it for trash. Um, uh, when I first moved to Huntington, uh, Walt Whitman Mall hadn't been built yet, and it was right across the street from us. And uh, Macy's finally moved in there a couple of years later. And I, at that time, Macy's sold uh, appliances, they sold uh, sporting goods, they had hardware, they had uh, m much more departments than what they have today. Today it's basically a clothing store. And on one of my walks through there, I saw this thing. Now we had early American furniture in the house, and this is, I would consider, early American. And they wanted $14 for this. Mm -hmm. And I said, I can make that for less than $14. Now, this is all made with, um, I bought the wood, of course, the lumber company. I have no power tools. So this is all cut by hand. Even these notches were cut by hand. These straps that the, this is a piece of copper tubing that I flattened out and curved to fit here. They used, they didn't round off the corners, they used an angle or a, like a shelf bracket 
to hold them together. These I happened to get from a barn that was being torn down. But, and a friend of mine um, was also into um, uh, woodworking, and he made his own stain. And, and I, I loved the, the color of the stain. He mixed, I think, turpentine with creosote. And, and uh, so I got my, my, my stain through him. So this is one of the first pieces I made. But again, this was made without any power tools. This is planed right. here. And this was cut with a coping saw and, and whatnot. Uh, and it turned out pretty good. That, that was, that's, that's over 40 years old now. So have you ever shown this to anyone? No, it's, just, it's in the house and we use it for magazines. Then when I was working, uh, I worked, uh, as I said, for local. And I, my job was, the last 25 years was in uh, highway construction. Uh, we were moving uh, poles and gas mains and whatnot that interfered with the width of the, of the, with the, with the road widenings. Um, at any rate, uh, this wood, uh, it was scraps from the deep trenches that they put wood, wood down inside. And uh, I decided I, you know, it would make a footstool. A friend of mine, I, I cut these to shape. And I, a friend of mine, I put them on a lathe and uh, windled this down and then took the edge off here. And then, as you can see, this is basically the same color. So my, I used mm -hmm. my friend's uh, stain again. Um, that's got to be 30 years old, I guess. It's very the, excellent work. I mean, it looks like it's, it's well, well it's, done it's, and it's it, sturdy. There's more joy to it than there is uh, beauty, I think. You know? and, and it's you. nice to have made it and make it look like what it was supposed to look like. Right. Uh, I'm, would you mind telling me about this? Sure. <coughs> These are my latest. This is your latest. This is my latest. These I look along, and I have everybody else doing it. These are old double hung uh, windows, old windows, and I have I bought a what do you call a heat gun that you it's electric and you first of all you have to carve the backs of these things out so that you get a, a, a recess. These are from a yard sale. These are not my paintings. Is but this one painting? This is one painting. Mm -hmm. And I've entitled this one Valley View. Mm -hmm. um, this is uh, probably a, an eighth of an inch thick from a yard sale. Uh -huh. And of course, I have to know the size and whatnot. Um, I put these up at. Uh, the clothesline yard sale, but they didn't go any place. They were overpriced. Yeah. This is again the same thing, uh, mm -hmm. same type of window with the edges on it. Uh, another, uh, this one is called uh, Meadows End. And uh, so are these are for sale. Yes. Well, or I give them to as housewarming gifts. Most of the stuff I make, I, I give away as household and whatnot. Um, so, and then mm -hmm. the other option with the double hung windows is to make a mirror. And this one we have in our bathroom. And Another one like it or this one? Just this one. We took it off the wall myself. Um, I wanted to leave it the raw wood, but we uh, had put that wallpaper strip around the uh, bathroom. And so this is the edge of that wallpaper strip. We put mm -hmm. that you know, around it to. Uh, um, Very nice. So these, uh, I have a friend of mine. That it's great to have friends in the business who uh, is a mirror and glass guy. So he, get, he cuts me the mirrors to the sizes that I want, and, uh, and he charges me a reasonable price. And uh, uh, you know, it, it really works well. Mm -hmm. I have all my friends and neighbors out looking for the uh, window frames, because they're really kind of hard to come by. 
Because most of the guys just throw them in a the dumpster and then that's the end of it or they just tear them apart. Right, but, but you, you find use for that. Oh, I, 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 and I, this is labor intensive, but I love it. It's, it's a, and, and it's something you can start and stop. You don't have to work continuously at it. It's hard to get the pictures. Why? Because, as it I said, they're... It has to be a certain size? It, well, the size, they have to be a minimum of, of 15 by 24. Um, but to get a decent looking picture and on that thick cardboard, because if, you, if it's just paper thin, it loses, it gets warped and, and whatnot, so it doesn't... Oh. And you can't, when it's paper thin, you cannot put it on a plywood. You well, saw. I could, but I have, I've, I've had no reason to do that because it, to me, ultimately, it bubbles and takes away oh. from it. So this is uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the hardest part with this is, is taking the back part of this off so that you can reset it. Very labor intensive that way. Um, now, you had something in that portfolio, that um, picture, okay. something you mentioned earlier about... Is, well, is that in a good place? Oh, I could hold one of them. Okay. Um, I was reading the New York Times, and let's see what the date. The date is Monday, May 8, 1994. Uh -huh. And this was in the entertainment section, and it caught my eye. And it's, yeah. it's one-dimensional. Uh -huh. You know, it is, there's no depth uh, to this. And I didn't know it at the time. And I was taking the uh, senior citizens art class in uh, Spring Senior Center at mm -hmm. the time. And this, I, and you just copied it. Yeah, but it's a that's a little bit smaller than this. But the, as you can see, the coloring is pretty close, and it's all watercolor. It's a very good image. Um, mm -hmm. I, I really enjoyed working on that one. Um, and you, is this for sale also? Uh, yeah, I think yeah, I put that in once, but uh, that was a spring, the the uh, clothesline yard sale. Uh, is that what they called it? At, Art sale. Yeah, they have a... Uh, At Guildhall. Yes, yes, I know. A lot of people put stuff in there. Oh, yeah, there's all and, sorts of art. There's kids' art in there, and there's old mm -hmm. guys like me and, and uh, whatnot. Um, this is just some of the... I, 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 I guess I can't really make up my mind what I want to do when it comes to... The, this is pen and ink. This is what? This is pen and ink. Pen and ink. Pen and ink. Yes, yes. Um, this one is watercolor. I also did, did this in, in pencil. I like working with uh, in pencil. Um, this is Bacchus, that's the goddess of wine, or the god of wine, or whatever it is. Uh, that's a little watercolor. Uh, these are just uh, various, oh, you must remember this one. This is the blacksmith shop up in Springs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Opposite, uh, what, what's the name of the hall up there in Springs? Um, Ashwag Hall. Ashwag Hall, just across the street from there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just messing around with different uh, this is watercolor. This is on... Uh, That's charcoal, isn't it? No, this is pe uh, pencil. Pencil? Pencil and whatnot. This goes down to that... Uh, not gardener. This, what's opposite Laos Point? Uh, the, the beach. I'm not uh, a native. <laughs> anyway, this was along that uh, road going down mm -hmm. there. Uh, this is another little thing I found in a magazine or whatever. And uh, just stri strictly sketches that either you get tired of or this is done in a couple of forms. Mm -hmm. uh, well, at any rate, it's, a, uh, it's kind of a mosque type building that's done in watercolor. Oh, this is. Whoops. 
you know, whatever happened to it. But this is the uh, no, the, uh, another the, another likeness just done in pen and ink, and I had the other one was in in in, uh, in color. So I mess around with all different. Uh, I what's that? That's so interesting. Which one is that now? That little one. The, the, <clears throat> this one? No, it's here. Oh. This. Okay. <laughs> this is. Um, I worked for CTC for ten years. The theater, the community theater company. CTC. Yeah, they they uh -huh. did the, they did the winter shows in um, Guildhall. Oh. Community theater. Uh, we did three plays a, a year, and uh, I did the scenery, or I helped build the scenery. And I don't know if you know, uh, Marion Stark or Marion King, was the. Um, president or vice president in charge of Bank of New York here and she was our musical comedy star Oh, and you know. she was also our banker <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I made one of these and it's all, it was all colored in with different lights and you know you see the court and then up in the corner I said to our favorite actress, songstress and bankstress, bankress <laughs> and uh, we feigned it and she had it on her desk. She's now in West Hampton or something, but it was apropos at the time for for uh, our relationship that you know Jeanette and I so had with her. That company is no longer here. CTC went no. out. It was a shame because it was really nice. we really put on some great productions, um, and it was fun working on the scenery. And uh, we had a lot of we had a good group of people. And the price was right. It was like fifteen dollars a play, and uh, and there's a lot of talent out here. You know, just there is a lot, and uh, some companies go away, and then new ones pop up. Well, I don't know what if anything's happened. We've been gone for close to five years, so I don't know if anything has uh, come to replace it. You would know that more than I. No, uh, I wish it was. But how come they uh, disbanded? Uh, hey, there's a, a million stories. Story. A million stories as to what happened. Uh -huh. but and are the people still here, though? Uh, if they're still alive, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. So what is that Okay, one? this is... I wonder what they said. <laughs> I have to read this one to you. Now, this is, um, there's actually 13 stars on here. Mm -hmm. They're all six-pointed stars. There's okay. five, four is nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 I'm sorry, 13 stars. The same basic uh, design as this flag today and the flag of, of um, Betsy Ross. With a six-pointed star? No, well, no, this, but the same motif. You got the, yeah. the, the alternate red and white stripe, and you have the mm -hmm. blue field with stars. Right. And this was, well, let me just read this a little bit to you. Um, as visitors uh, swarmed into New York World's Fair 1940, they were stopped in their tracks when they came to the Long Island uh, exhibit. They saw a ragged old American flag, which is... That picture there. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Okay. They f I'll, I'll brief, go brief on this. They found this in, like, 1927 in an attic in Bridgehampton. The flag. The, the, this thing here. The flag. That's the remnant the of, of a flag. They found uh -huh. it up in the attic. The story is, very briefly, that Colonel Holbert, uh, who was from Bridgehampton, Mm -hmm. was initially made in charge of all, the, they took all the cattle out to Montauk so that the British wouldn't kill them and, and, and use them for food. So that was his first job. He went out there and, 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 and took care of the cattle. The next episode is that he's bringing prisoners of war back from Fort Ticonderoga, upstate New York, to, I think, Philadelphia or something like that. And it's a very gray area, but... Uh, he, um, they decided that this preceded the Betsy Ross flag. 
Well, oh. this Newsday article proves that it didn't. That it did not? That it did not. It, this was built like an, done in like the 1840s. That's what they proved you, you, using cloth DNA. But to me, that's a, just a very interesting uh, bit of local lore. And this is a, uh, you know, the, the Betsy Ross job. And uh -huh. it, again, you have the same sequence of the stars and stripes and the blue field. So you did both. Yeah. And, and, people, and you made it out of a fence. Yeah, this is uh, uh, storm fencing. And I, I, I used the old broken off stuff so it has the tattered effect. Mm. And then on the back, there's a little bit of history of how they came about, the stars and stripes and the, and the blue field. And they had the, sig the states by order of uh, their Entering. adopting it. You know? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Uh, these are, I got into a little photography. These are two pictures I took on the same day. This was taken at Bayard Cutting in Bayshore. And this was taken out at Indian Island. Same day, same storm was in March. What kind of camera? The regular, quick punch, point and shoot. Black and white? No, this is color. Oh, that is color. This is color. Can you find any color in it? Well, just uh, darker and lighter color. But, the, but there's no colors per no. se, right? No. And that, uh, that really caught me. Uh, and so that's the extent of uh, the art there, of the mm -hmm. photography. And then, mm -hmm. do you recognize this? No. This was uh, uh -huh. uh, down at uh, the base of... Uh, Springs Fireplace Road, just north of the fork at Three, three Mile Harbor. Three Mile Harbor. Well, Ed, this is really uh, very, very interesting. And I love history. And everything you make is so very, very interesting. Uh, but the best part is that you enjoy doing all of it. So I want to thank you for coming on my show. And don't be surprised if people call you. You have to gonna give out a lot of autographs. <laughs> you can keep that. that uh, you oh, might. really? I love it. Uh, and I want to thank everybody. Goodbye, goodbye. And I want to thank the pizza place for uh, underwriting my show. You want to wave goodbye? Bye. Be well, everybody. Yes. And God bless. Bye.